I still remember you blocked my shot, so I still get a chance to to to, <laughs> to get some payback uh, uh, next season. <laughs> What up, EuroLeague fans? Welcome to a championship edition of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today, we have a very special guest, um, a candidate for the EuroLeague Rising Stars Award, um, a EuroLeague champion, um, you know, yeah. my guy, um, you know, one of the up, most up and coming, uh, you know, talents of in the EuroLeague and in Europe in general. Um, that is Philip Petrescu. Philip, how's everything? Everything's good, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, man. Nice to see you. Um, so let's let's go back, man. A, a month ago, you won the Euroleague. You know, you're 22 years old. 22. You make me yeah. feel like a like an old man. 22. I can, can't remember when I was 22 years old. Um, so, right. <laughs> what was what was that experience like? You know, winning the Euroleague championship. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was surreal, to be honest. Uh, just growing up as a kid, you know, in uh, in Serbia, a basketball country, and all you do is watch basketball, you know, if you, if you play basketball. Uh, and just watching all those uh, players and teams before before me uh, do it and uh, being able to, to lift the trophy, you know, with the team, it's uh, just surreal, man. And, I mean, you just mentioned, I mean, you, you're from Belgrade, Serbia. So to have the opportunity to lift the title and, and, and win the title, you know, in your first your rookie EuroLeague season at home, you know, how many times have you passed the the, the Stark Arena um, and now you're actually, you know, celebrating a, a title and a championship in it? Like, what, what was that feeling like? Yeah, I mean, even better, you know, having uh, all my friends and family around. And uh, like you said, in this arena, uh, when I was like eight or nine, I was the... Uh, the clean guy that was cleaning the floor, you know, for, for the EuroLeague. <laughs> I actually cleaned it on your game when you were uh, at Seska. Oh, man, don't, 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 make, don't make me feel even older, man. Don't make me feel even older. <laughs> it, was, it was a while ago. So, yeah, like, when you think about it, being back there, lifting the trophy, uh, just crazy. What was the what was the celebration like? I know Belgrade, Belgrade is, is famous for, you know, the celebration. And, I mean, and, and that's yeah. just, um, you know, with the, I know they know how to celebrate. So what was that? What was it like? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but you know, I was I'm uh, I'm one of the younger guys, so yeah. you know, I let I let all the organization of celebrating and everything. I let, I left it to Vasa, <laughs> and he had everything set up. He had everything set up. You know, we had a bus to drive the whole team. You know, to to, to places, to, uh, yeah. clubs, and everything. So, you know, we had the we had the R and B stuff for you know the the guys yeah. that like R and B. We had some Serbian stuff for. For the guys that you know speak Serbian in the team, there's a couple, so we had you know we had something for everybody, and uh, I think it was a great night for sure. That's good, man. Bra- Bravo, Vasa, man. Leave it, leave it to the vet, leave it to the vet to, to yeah. <laughs> set the can't go the wrong with it. Up. Exactly. Now yeah. you, you we talked about this is your your rookie your league experience. Um, so initially, you know, what was your your first thoughts about playing in your league? Obviously, you know, you wish that you probably had. Um, a little more time, but you played with such an experienced group. So what did you learn, you know, over your first year of the season? First thing that sticks out, I think, is just the the, the level uh, and the mm-hmm. physicality of it because it's I've never played at such a high level of physicality before. Uh, it's so much different than anything else. Uh, ABA League, but even, even the Euro Cup, played against some Euro Cup teams last year, and uh, it's not even close. Like, you have to... You have to be at such a high level physically just to be able to, you know, compete and uh, be able to be on the court. And then, obviously, when it's uh, such a high level of physicality, every, every every little detail matters. Every little detail of uh, just creating any advantage you can uh, you can use that op- opponents give you. So that's probably the biggest thing for me, just the level of competition and uh, physicality. You you were. Part of the team that had some of the most experienced front court players, you know, you look at Tibor Plies, you know, Brian Dunstan, um, Adrian Mormon, you know, Chris Singleton. I can keep continuing to go down the list. You know, what did what was it like going against those guys? You know, every single day in practice, and how did it make you, you know, a, a better player? Yeah, you know, like, like you said, uh, I did play in the first uh, first half of the season. Second half, not as much, uh, but. I felt like it was a great learning year for me uh, because of those those guys and just being able to to go against them every day in practice uh, is just you know you can't get that 
uh, in many places. And uh, I feel like I got the most out of it. Like you said, Tibor and uh, Brian, two very different players, but the veterans, uh, you know, been through a lot. So uh, I was definitely able to pick up uh, many things from them. Now, we talked about a little bit before about Belgrade and Serbia is your home, you know, your home city and Serbia is your home country. Right now, Serbia is kind of like at the, the pinnacle of basketball. You know, you have, you know, uh, uh, the Joker who's won MVP. We talked about Vasa, you know, you know, winning, uh, you know, the Final Four MVP. Uh, Bielica has just won his uh, uh, title with the Golden State Warriors. So what does basketball mean, um, you know, in Serbia? Um, and then what, is it, what does it mean for you to have, you know, all these great, you know, role models? We can go down a list of so many great players, um, you know, for you to, you know, try to follow their paths. It means a lot. It's, it's, it's basically a, lot, a lifestyle for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, Serbia is not a very big country, so it definitely brings uh, a lot of joy and happiness to, uh, you know, to our people when, uh, when we do something, you know, both individually and uh, as a national team. Uh, you know, it's a great pride for Serbian people. And, uh, you know, it's just an honor for me to be able to hopefully continue, you know, down that path and be able to, you know, uh, keep on going, keep on uh, representing Serbia wherever I play and obviously for a national team. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, you, you went to Gonzaga, so you have that pedigree there, you know, with, you know, so many great players, uh -huh. international and, and, and both, uh, you know, American players that have had great careers in the NBA, but also in EuroLeague. Um, like you said, you're part of this great, you know, pedigree of Serbian players. Who are some players that you reach out to um, some older players, whether or not it's from college or whether or not it's from, you know, high school or or or, or at home in, in Serbia. Who do you reach out to, you know, for advice, you know, you know when it comes to your career? You know, so far uh, in my young career, I didn't have, you know, many years, uh, you know, struggling like this one a little bit. So yeah. uh, I would say I definitely reach out to some of the older teammates, you know, like uh, Josh Perkins was a great teammate back at Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. He played in Serbia one year as well. So. Uh, I keep in touch with him. Obviously, Vasa was uh, and Kuno as well this year. They were great, uh, a great resource and great help, you know, uh, inside the team. Uh, but I also reach out, you know, to some of the older coaches uh, from mm -hmm. Serbia that you know go back in the day with me, uh, as well as my family. So you know, just the people I trust, uh, and you know, I try to listen to everybody and uh, try to pick out what's the best. But you know, uh, finally, just you know, uh, believe in myself and. Uh, just, you know, have that faith. Um, before we go to the quick shot questions, I have a question. Like I said, you're, you're 22 years old. You just recently turned 22 a couple months ago. So in 10 years from now, where would you like to see yourself? Oh, 10 years. That's, that's a long time, man. <laughs> that's probably where you're at right now. But uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, playing for more good Euroleague teams, maybe going to the NBA for uh, for a little bit, but uh, I just want to keep winning, you know, keep winning as many of these championships because they felt amazing for sure. Uh, you know, so wherever I'm at, just, you know, keep winning and hopefully uh, have a couple more Euroleague championships under my belt. Definitely, man. You are, you're off to, off to a great start so far. Now we're going to get into our quick shot questions. The first year in EuroLeague, you know, where was your favorite place to play to? Or was there like one arena that you were excited, you know, that you want to play? For me, it was was Oka. Like I wanted to play in Oka because I experienced the I wanted to experience the Path and Ankles fans and you know all that different stuff. There, was there a place or specific place that you most look forward to playing at? Uh I definitely looked to uh I wanted to play in uh uh Olympiaco Stadium. Uh, mm -hmm. But they they had uh, some fans limit, so it wasn't like it usually is. Yeah. Uh, so I would say maybe uh, maybe Fenerbahce Arena, just yeah. you know, to feel that feel that rivalry inside Turkey, uh, because it's you know it's the same city basically, uh, yeah. European side and against Asian side kind of thing. So just to be able to feel that rivalry was uh, was pretty cool for sure. How did you celebrate when you signed your first contract? Uh took my peeps out to a restaurant, to dinner. Uh, and then after, you know, party a little bit for sure. Did you did you did you, did you pick up the tab or you made somebody else pay? Oh no, I got I got it though. I was a, I was a big <laughs> dog then. <man. laughs> 
is there is there a, a opponent or opposing player um, that you played against that surprised you? Um, you know, during your first your first uh, season in your league. Yeah, for sure. It was uh it was the first game uh, uh, against Madrid, against uh, Tavares. Uh, yeah, it was huge, man. Like yeah. I never played against anybody like that. I mean, I played against Boban uh, with the national team. So, but I never play against him in a game, in an actual game. So, uh, just to go against him is it was it, it was a you know a great experience. It just you know put me back in the place like I thought I was you know big and tall. But then you see him, exactly. and uh, it just makes the game different. So, it was a uh, you know uh, it was a check in the first game. Yeah, man, you you don't realize how tall he is, or just how like how strong and how big he is until you actually match up against. Yeah. I remember the first time I matched up against him, we had to do the jump ball. I was like, nah, this is. I was looking. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Here. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. If you can play one on one against anybody in the history of basketball, um, Europe, NBA, um, Serbia, um, who would it be? Oof. It would be uh, it would be Kobe for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I never got to watch MJ, uh, but I was watching Kobe. Him and Dirk were my favorites, but I would choose Kobe, you know, just because I would like to go against that kind of uh, competitor, competitor and uh, you know that kind of competitive energy that he has. I mean, that he had, uh, which is I think I've never seen that before. In, in any player that I watched. So, you know, just to go against that and see where I'm at would be, uh, you know, would be great. Definitely, man. Definitely. I think, I think, all, I think all of us uh, agree about that. Thank you. Thank you for uh, spending the time with us. Um, you know, you, congratulations on a great season. Um, you know, have fun celebrating this year's league title, um, you know, during the off season. Um, and I look forward to, you know, getting a chance to, uh, you know, play against you, uh, um, I still remember you blocked my shot, so I still get a chance to to to, <laughs> to get some payback uh, uh, next season. <laughs> Hopefully, man. Appreciate appreciate you for everything. Thank you, Euroleague fans. Unfortunately, this is our last episode of the season. Um, I just want to say thank you to to all of our guests. Um, you know, for stepping in a quarter with me that we've had throughout this season. And all the rising star players. Um, thank you to all the Euroleague clubs. You know, all the fans for tuning in and watching in um, and make sure that you continue to watch our, our episodes, um, share um, and like um, and all of the above. And uh, I'll be able to talk to you guys very, very soon. Uh, signing out for this Euroleague season is Kyle Hines with a quarter with Kyle Hines. Take care.